In this video, I'm going to show you how to handle errors in your Power BI reports when your source unexpectedly changes. I'm going to explain to you the issue that I faced and also go through the step-by-step -step solution to fix the problem. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi. My name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So this is a problem that was inspired by a real life problem that I encountered recently. So this is the scenario. I have this file which is just an example file here and this file is exported from a system somewhere and it gets automatically updated on a daily basis in the same folder. So very similar to the auto saving files video that I covered using Power Automate in the past. So if you want to know how that works, go check it out. But essentially imagine that this file is a file that lists out any entries in that system that needs an attention. So which is what my Power BI report reports on. The problem arises when there are no entries that needs attention in the system. The system outputs something like this. So if I close this one, just go back to this empty and this is how the system outputs the file if there are no entries in the system itself so as you can see because it outputs an error message instead of an empty table this causes my reports to error out because obviously my reports are looking for columns that don't exist according to this error and currently there was no way to change the way the file gets exported from the system like this so let me show you how it looks like let's say on a power bi report so first of all we're going to open a new blank power bi report here i'm going to go get data from excel workbook let's get it from this products file in this uh, products folder so what it will do is obviously it will give us the report with the sheet that has data in it, so which is exactly fine. And for us to use the data in this table is actually pretty simple. So we just take the sheet here, go transform data. We just need to clean it up a little bit because obviously we have in this file the lists of table and take column headers that we want, which is here on line three. You'll see that on the first line is, is showing us what date we exported this file from the system. So we use that for other things, but in this scenario, we don't really need it. So from here, what I'm going to do in order to clean it up is to just remove the, let's say the top two rows like this, maybe use first rows headers, and then maybe go transform detect data type so it just changes the data types for each of my columns here we're just going to name this one products and then we're going to simply close and load so you will see once it's loaded it will show us a table on the right hand side which has all the fields that we want to put let's say on our report so maybe you want to see uh, categories quantity and unit price on a table like this that's fine now if we go back to the file here and the file that we have connected to is this file the products here in the uh, product folder now you'll see that if I replace that file with this empty product file so I've just replaced it if you open it obviously it's empty like this and gives us the error if we close that and let's hit refresh in our Power BI report here, you will see that it will give us some sort of error. So you'll see that the refresh failed because it's looking for basically a column that doesn't exist in that file that we have in this location. However, the thing is, when we get that error in our file, this means that there is nothing that we need to address in the system, which means it's a good thing. 
So in our Power BI report, we essentially want to be able to still refresh it. The refresh should still be successful and it should not error out if there are no entries that needs addressing in the source itself, it should just return us an empty table instead of erroring like this. So, so what do I do? So first let's go back to our transform data here and let's trace that error itself. So from here, let's refresh preview and it's giving us saying that order ID of the table wasn't found, which if we go back up a couple of steps, you'll notice that there's only one column here, column one. Why is that? That's because you'll notice here we've preserved all those steps that you've done, uh, which is the removing the top two rows, promoting headers, change type, but there's no more data in this table because we replaced it, right? Because this is the error. Um, this is the error file. If you go back to navigation, you'll see that it just gives us the error message. So what do we need to do here? So first let's go to the product that is not empty. And from here, what we need to do is we need to actually copy the column headers that we have here if we have data. So we're just gonna copy that. We'll go back to our Power BI report here. We'll enter data. We'll just create a new custom uh, data here, static data. So we'll paste those column headers exactly as they are. Uh, it You'll see that it starts to promote it as a uh, column header. We don't want to do that. We just want to leave it as a value in this table. Leave it as the column headers as column one to column five. We'll name this one, let's say headers and then click OK. So this creates us a header that we can use to the products table if there are no column headers in there. So we're just going to reference it anyway. So we're going to simply just disable the load for that. And for this one, we're going to remove everything else that we have apart from the just loading the data itself. And then from here, we're gonna go append queries um, and not just append queries, append queries as new. And we want to do that. Um, and all it will do is simply stack these two tables on top of each other. And the key thing here is that you want to have the headers at the top of the row and you want to have the products at the bottom. If you hit OK, so you'll see you have the column headers on the first row here, which is obviously the order ID, unit price, quantity from the headers table. And then you have the data from the products table here, which is just the error. You'll notice that the error message is stacked on top of order ID because we kept the column headers, column one, column two, column three. So column one is where the error is and you'll have the order ID in column one. So that appends that on the same column. And then from here, you need to simply just go through the same transformations that you would do if there is data here. So maybe you want to, let's say, order ID like this, name this one, let's say just unit price, quantity like this, products and category. And lastly, what we need to do is we need to remove the rows that have no values or we don't count as values in our table. So from, we can't use the order ID because there's an error there, but let's go to unit price because every single entry in our export will always have a unit price. So from here, we want to exclude any rows that are empty and any rows that have unit price so basically exclude this whole row with the column headers if you hit okay it will give us empty but this is exactly what we need it just gives us empty but it doesn't error out which is exactly what we wanted so lastly we just need to disable the load for this one products uh, main and what we want to load in our data model is this one so now that's it. Let's simply hit close and apply here, which uh, you will notice probably will break this table, which is fine. We'll just simply drag this 
values again so quantity unit price doesn't matter but you'll see that it gives us a table now if there are no values which is exactly what we wanted so now to see the true test of this let's go back here let's uh, let's go back to our source here and let's replace this value now with a table that is not empty so i'm going to copy this file paste it to where power bi links to the file so if we open now this file you will notice that it has now the the data and if we simply hit refresh you will see that it will start to give us values so it loads us the same table data that we expect um, but doesn't error out even if you put back the empty it will still not error out because we tested it the first time so i want to just go back and show you how does it actually work if there is a data in our uh, export so let's just go back to power query one last time let's go back to the uh, well actually from the main if we just hit refresh you'll see that obviously this is the data as it is if there is data being sent from the system let's go back to the products which is where we append the data let's go back up to the source step where we append them so you'll notice that we have the uh, the column headers here the one that we created and then this is the column headers that we have in the uh, the main products table so we did the same thing obviously we, we still renamed the whole thing uh, it still stays there uh, but it doesn't error out anymore because we are referring to the columns as column one two three four five instead of renaming you know like whatever it was before and then lastly what we did and where the magic actually is is in the filtered rows here because this filter filters out any rows that are empty and any rows that have unit price in them if i click there you will see that it filters out any rows that have the unit price it means that not it doesn't just filter out these two rows that are empty it also filters out these rows that have the column headers there you go so you now have a report that produces a set of columns and gives you a result regardless if you have a data or not and that's really it for this video I hope you now know how easy it is to handle data sources that are changing their column names that causes your reports to error out. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.